welcome to the Become a Writer Today podcast with Brian Collins. Here you'll find practical advice and interviews for all kinds of writers. Would you like to take your writing to the next level? Perhaps you're already writing 500 or 1,000 words every day, but you want to accomplish a bit more. Perhaps you want to find more clients or you want to create an online course to support your book, or perhaps you just want to write more books this year. Hi there, my name is Brian Collins, and in this podcast episode, I'm going to give you three strategies which will help you become a more efficient, productive, and effective writer. And these are three strategies that I wish I'd known about when I started Become a Writer today back in 2014. And I've also used these three strategies to dramatically increase how much I can write and how I can manage different parts of the business. Strategy one, craft a 90 day plan. I've learned from a number of entrepreneurs that I've interviewed that they all have plans they work towards. They all have particular goals that they want to accomplish within a given period. But here's the thing. The most effective people don't set goals for the entire year because they know that a year is such a long time. And while you can feel excited about a goal in January, you're more than likely going to lose momentum on that goal when you get to April, May, June, July. Instead, it's far better to break the year down into increments. Increments of 90 days. And 90 days is a great time frame to pick because it's not so long that it feels like it's very far in the future, but it still gives you enough time to accomplish something meaningful like the draft of your book. So I'd encourage you to pick one goal or big rock that you're going to focus on for the next 90 days. And last year, I picked a number of 90 day big rock goals throughout the year. And the one I picked for the period just before Christmas was to create this course, The Efficient Writer. Once you've got your 90 day plan, then what you need to do is visualize it in one place. So you could have a to do list where you're looking at items related to your 90 day plan, or perhaps you have something on a whiteboard. And I actually have a whiteboard where I write in my office and I normally pick goals for each week that relate to that 90 day plan. Smaller goals, of course, because I'm always working towards that one big project. In other words, you should be able to visualize what you're working on and when and track your progress over time. And if you really want to become more efficient, then you need to limit your work in progress as well. Because when you've scaled up your writing, it can feel like you have a lot of new opportunities. You've got new clients you can take on. Perhaps there's a new site you want to start. Start. You've got new ideas for books. But if you say yes to all of these projects, then what will happen is you will overwhelm yourself. And it's far better to you know, pick the one project that's most important to you for the next 90 days and limit anything else that was going to detract you from that most important project. Because this is something you're going to work on for an hour or two every day. Strategy number two, plan your work with a calendar. So when I started off writing, I didn't really get the value of having a calendar. I thought it was something, you know, people used at work to you know, find time for staff meetings and also to find time for, you know, appointments with other people. What role did any of that have to play in the creative process? But here's the thing. Professional writers have deadlines. They have deadlines that their clients set for them. For example, I want you to write an ebook or I want you to write, you know, a series of articles by the end of the month. And they also have deadlines that they set for themselves. So if you're an author and you're, you know, you're into self publishing, nobody's going to say to you that they want your book published on Amazon by the end of next month. That's up to you to do it and you to do it alone. So what you need to do is think of your calendar as a way of managing your time more effectively. And if you're working for other people, you can put their deadlines into your calendar so you can plan ahead in advance and see what you need to do and when. And if you're working for yourself, you can put your big creative goals into that calendar and you can see when something is drawing a little bit closer. So as an example, last year in 2019, when I finished editing my book, This Is Working, I set a publication date around April and I put that date into my calendar. And when I got to February of last year, I was able to see that you know, publication date was drawing nearer and then I needed to work with an editor to finalize the proofs for the book. And I also needed to get the book cover uh, right and to a place that I was happy with before the publication date came along. And of course, there will be times when you need to move deadlines in your calendar and that's perfectly fine too. But a deadline has a way of clarifying the mind and as a way of helping you focus. So I'd encourage you to think of your calendar as something that can help you accomplish more rather than something which is going to restrict or constrain your creativity. The other way I like to use a calendar is to plan my week ahead in advance. And this is something I've only started to do over the last year or so. But basically what you need to consider is 
what's coming up next week and next month. And then block book time in your calendar for what's important to you. Because, you know, if you started an online business or if you've written a couple of books or you've a lot of different clients, your calendar can quickly get full of other people's priorities. And that can take away from, you know, a writing project that's important to you or it can take away from one of your other creative goals. So what I like to do at the moment, and this is a strategy I learned from Nir Eyal, who I interviewed in this podcast before Christmas, is every Sunday evening, I spend about 30 minutes looking at my calendar for the week ahead. And then I'll block book time in the calendar for each activity that I'm going to spend time on on a given day. Typically, I'll block book an hour to two hours for creative work in the morning. So that could be working on a series of articles for Medium, which is a social media network I'm focused on at the moment, a social media network for writers. Or it could be creative work like this, recording this podcast episode, or it could be recording, you know, videos for a course. But typically, whatever my creative area of focus is, it relates to that big rock that I talked about a few moments ago. And then I'll allocate the rest of the time to the day to other tasks that I want to spend time on, you know, perhaps catching up with some clients or uh, attending to some copywriting work or meetings, phone calls. And typically I'll put things like administrative activities, like email at the end of the day. Now, this may sound like you're micromanaging your entire day, but what you're actually doing is taking charge of the one asset that we all have the same amount of, and that's time. Because even as your income increases as a writer, you still have the amount of time to waste or spend each week. And that brings me to strategy number three, which is to outsource. Outsourcing is the single best way that you will level up how much you can produce and when. Now, when I started to become a writer today, I didn't really get the value of outsourcing because I didn't have a budget for outsourcing. So I did almost all of it myself. You know, I started the site on WordPress by taking tutorials on lynda.com, which is now LinkedIn Learning. And I also took a design course at the Digital Skills Academy, which is a college in Dublin. And I learned the basics of design. And I used what I learned in that course, you know, to create a logo and also to figure out, you know, the right fonts and colors for my website. All of that wasn't really writing, but I was happy to spend time, you know, on these different parts of the site back then because it was really just a hobby and not a business. A couple of things happened that changed my mindset about outsourcing. Firstly, I got a job as a copywriter, so I had a little bit more money each month after I paid all the bills. And secondly, I wanted to self-publish a book called A Handbook for the Productive Writer. And I've since relaunched and rewritten that book. After I had the manuscript ready, I knew I needed a book cover because you know, professional authors have professional looking book covers. But I also knew that a book cover can cost several hundred dollars to hire someone to create. So instead, I decided to put my design skills at the time into practice. And I spent a weekend designing a book cover in the evening time and also early in the morning. And the results, you know, they were okay. It wasn't completely terrible, but but I also knew it wouldn't stand apart compared to some of the other books on Amazon. I also knew that the cover needed more work and that was time I didn't have. So I took the extra bit of money that I was earning from my job at the time and I used it to run a competition on 99 designs for working with a book cover designer. And the person who won that competition was able to create something much better than I could have ever created. And what's more, they saved me a lot of time. Time I was able to actually spend writing and promoting that book back then. So since then, I've actually worked with many different designers and book cover designers and so on. And I don't spend any time designing images for Become a Writer today because it's just not where my time is best spent. I also outsource a number of other parts of the business these days. Bookkeeping is something that always stresses me out, but you got to pay your taxes. So I work with a bookkeeper who helps me reconcile my bank accounts and update my accounting software. I also work with a WordPress developer from time to time who helps me fix issues on the site. I have somebody who helps me with SEO for Become a Writer today. And I also work with somebody who helps me manage my email and my inbox. And I've also worked with research assistants and so on over the past few years. Now, depending on what I'm working on, these people will come and go. And I don't directly employ any of them. They're contractors who, you know, I hire for a particular job. If all of that sounds a bit much, I just encourage you to ask a couple of key questions. What one task am I spending too much time on? What one task do I really hate doing? Or what one task really stresses me out? Then ask yourself, how can I take money from one part of my creative work or my creative business and use it to take that task off my plate? And from there, you can quickly determine what you should outsource and what you should spend your time on. Now, there are advanced strategies that can really help you with outsourcing, such as figuring out your ideal rate per hour and what your current rate per hour is. 
Once you know that, you can determine your budget for outsourcing and you can also figure out what tasks are driving revenue and value for your business and what ones you should continue to focus on. I cover all of that in my new course, The Efficient Writer. I cover the strategies I've mentioned in this podcast episode too. If you're interested in joining, the course is open now. It's courses.becomearitertoday.com and then just click on the Efficient Writer image and you, you can see what's inside. But basically, I cover topics like effective writing, goal setting, collaboration, And I've got a number of bonuses, such as how to find readers fast and some discounts, which can help you become a more efficient and effective writer. And if you've got questions about the course while it's open, you can email me, brian, B-R-Y-A-N, at becomearitertoday.com. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. If you did, please leave a rating on the iTunes store. And if you want to accomplish more with your writing, please visit becomearitertoday.com forward slash join and I'll send you a free email course. Thanks for listening.